Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to another reading of the Elder oh, Scrolls. Today we're going to be reading Sun's Dawn, Book 2 of 2920, The Last Year of the First Empire by Kovarak Townway. A little amendment about uh, the the last part one, book one, uh, Tulua, the, the girl at the end of the story, uh, was a Dunma, and the mistress of the Duke. Um, also interesting, that guy's name was, I forgot the guy's name, but it is the name of the plaza that's in, uh, Mournhold, in the Tribunal DLC. Mm, a little tidbit of information for you. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know why she had a pouch. I find that very disturbing. But I, I guess they're just saying she's, her belly, because she was pregnant? Eh? Don't even don't have a pouch, do they? I don't know. Let's get on with it. Alright, Sun's Dawn time. Alright. The third of Sun's Dawn. 2920. The Isle of... Oh, Atrium. Somerset. Oh, jumping all over the place. Yeah. Oh, it's... Soth wait, why the hell is Soth the Sea in Somerset? Oh, no, wait a minute. Soth the Sea watched the initiates float one by one up to the... Osseum tree. Taking a fruit or a flower from its high branches before dropping back to the ground with varying degrees of grace. He took a moment while nodding his head in approval to admire the day. The whitewashed statue of Surabane, which the great mage was said to have posed for in ancient days, stood at the precipice of the cliff overlooking the bay. Pale purple Puscato flowers wave... Hmm? Flowers waves. I think. Hmm, I hate it. Why are there so many spelling mistakes in these books? Pale purple Pascado flowers waved to and fro, fro in the gentle breeze. Beyond ocean and the misty border between Atrium and the main island of Somerset. Alright, now it's time for Salt of Sea's voice. I have no idea what that would be. By and large, acceptable, he proclaimed as the last student dropped her fruit in his hand. With a wave of his hand, the fruit and flowers were back in the tree. With another wave, the students had formed in pos into position in a semicircle around the sorcerer. He pulled a small, fibrous ball, about a foot in diameter, from his white robes. What is this? The students understood this test. It asked them to cast a spell of identification on the mysterious object. Each initiate closed his or her eyes and imagined the ball in the realm of the universal truth. What does that mean? The universal truth. I don't know. Is that like the thing that the Dwemer found out and then they found out there were characters in a video game and then they zero summed? Is that the universal truth? I don't know. It's fine. Its energy had a unique resonance. As all physical and spiritual matter does, a negative aspect, a duplicate vision, relative paths, true meaning, a song in the cosmos, a texture in the fabric of space, a facet of being that has always existed and always will exist. That's a good line. I like that one. <laughs> That's pretty good, yeah. I'm all... Wait, wait. I'm all... <laughs> Said a young Nord named Welleg which brought giggles from some of the younger initiates, but a frown from most, including Sotha C. You must be stupid or at least amusing. Oh wait, you must be stupid if you, if you must, let me, let me try it again. If you must be stupid, at least be amusing, growled the sorcerer, and then looked at a young, dark-haired Altima lass. Wait, can Altima have dark hair? That's racist. Who looked confused. Let's up there, do you know? It's Grum, said Lathria, uncertainly. What? What the Druf myth after Dave K K K Fanicism? Kavinicism, but very good, nevertheless. Said Sol to say, I'm sorry, what? I. D I. I don't know. I. Is. I know what Druth are. I don't know what meth is. Is that a verb? 
Is that is that like a is that like an icky thing that Drews do sometimes when they is that is that like masturbation? I, is it is it is it smeg? Is that what it is? Is is Grom smeg? Okay, it's smeg. All right, great. Wait, he's he's holding a ball of smeg. Yeah. All right then. I mean, did he say wait 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 actually wait was it white? Uh, it's a small fibrous ball. Oh no, his robes are white, so we don't know what color it is, but. I'm going with Smeg. <laughs> oh, shit, I skipped too many pages. Now tell me, what does that mean? I don't know, admitted Lothrath. The rest of the students also shook their heads. There are layers to understanding all things, said Sothelsea. The common man looks at an object and fits it into a place in his way of thinking. Those skilled in the old ways, in the way of the Sidic... In mysticism, can see an object and identify it by its proper role. But one more layer is needed to be peeled back to achieve understanding. You must identify the object by its role and its truth and interpret that meaning. In this case, this ball is indeed Grum. Smeg. Which is the substance created by the Druth, an underwater race in the north and western parts of the continent. For one year of their life, they undergo carvanism. All right. When they walk upon the land, following that, they return to the water and meth. <laughs> what kind of a bird is that? Or devour the skin. Wait. Or devour the skin and organs they needed for land dwelling. Ugh. They then vomit it up into little balls like this. Grum. Juice vomit. Well, I was close. I was close. I mean, it's... It's basically smoke, right? <laughs> Students looked at the ball a little queasily. Sophocy always loved this lesson. I'm sure he did. Sophocy, you fucking freak. God, I'm, I'm disappointed I never got to kill you in the first place. Alright, fourth of Sun's Dusk, Sun's Dawn, 2920. The Imperial City, Cyrodiil. Oh, here we go, the Empire. Spies! muttered the Emperor, sitting in his bath. Okay, staring at a lump on his foot. Okay. All around me, traitors and spies. His mistress, Raja, watched his back. Her legs wrapped around his... Wait. Ooh. So she's like spooning him from behind? I guess. She knew after all these many years when to be central and when to be sexual. When he was in a mood like this, it was best to be calmly, soothingly, seductively central. Okay, are there going to be more, like, sexy scenes? Like, I mean, it was only for, like, a, a one paragraph, but there were some sexy scenes in the last book, and I don't know if I really want... I'm really comfortable reading all these sexy scenes. I mean, Lost of Argoni Made is one thing. I mean, come on. That's great. It's a great book. Everyone loves it, but, um, I feel uncomfortable. Anywho. Yeah, that's right. And not to say a word unless he asked for a... a last, asked her a direct question. Which he did. What do you think? Wait. What, what was his voice again? The king's voice? The emperor's voice. It's just basically a more high version of your own voice. What do you think when a fellow steps on his imperial majesty's foot and says, I'm sorry, your lord, majesty. Don't you think? Wait. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, your imperial majesty. Don't you think, pardon me, your imperial majesty is more appropriate? I'm sorry, well, that almost sounded like... Wait. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, he said I'm sorry instead of pardon me. Right. Well, that almost sounds like the bastard Argonian was sorry I miss Barry Majesty. <laughs> yes. That he hopes we lose the war with Morrowind. That's what it sounds like. What... What would... Wait, what's her voice? I don't know. What would make you feel better? <laughs> okay. Asked Roger. Would you like him flogged? He is only, as you say, the battle chief of Soul Rest. It will teach him to mind where he's stepping. Oh, wait. My father would have flogged. Oh, wait. Is the Emperor uh, the son that was having a, a duel in the last book? My father would have flogged him. My grandfather would have had him killed. The Emperor grumbled. But I don't mind if they all step on my feet, provided they respect me and don't plot against me. 
Wait, who are we talking into? Maybe maybe it is the same. Okay. Must be. I mean this is only this is the next month, remember? Oh that's true. This is this is like this is like twenty four, except it's a year. <laughs> I mean, sure. Except events do not occur in real time. Yes, that's true. Well I can. I mean you could always read this book like once a month <laughs> or a year if you wanted to. That's uh, that's even I wouldn't do that. <laughs> You must, you must, wait, you must trust someone. Only you, smiled the Emperor, turning slightly to give Raja a kiss. And my son, Jurek, there you go, he's, he's, not, he's not Jurek, I suppose. Though I wish he were a little more cautious. And your counsel, and the postrate, asked, I really need to figure out how to say that name, that word. Potentate, we... We potentate. We already we already decided that. Asked Raja. A pack of spies and a snake. Laughed the Empire, kissing his mistress again. Oh, okay. Wait, hang on. As they began to make love, he whispered. As long as you're true, I can handle the world. Okay, that's creepy. Yeah, I know. Third of Sun's Dawn, 2920. Mournhold, Mowind. Oh, it's Tololola again. Yes, all right. Tulala, tu Tulala, stood at the black, bejeweled city gates. A wind howled around her, but she felt nothing. The Duke had been furious upon hearing his favorite mistress was pregnant and cast her from his sight. Oh, that's unfortunate. She tried again and again to see him, but the guards turned her away. Finally, she returned to her family and told them the truth. If only she had lied and told them she did not know who the father was. A soldier, or a wandering adventurer, anyone. But she told him that the father was the Duke, a member of House Indrel. And they did what she knew they would have to do, as proud members of House Redoran. Wait, what? Oh, the, oh man, people are getting expunged. Upon her hand was burned the sign of expulsion. Ah, a wee big father had branded on her. That's terrible. But the Duke's cruelty hurt her far more. She looked out the gates into the wide winter plains, twisted sleeping trees and skies without birds. No one in Morrowind would take her in now. She must go far away. With slow, sad steps, she began her journey. Oh, that sucks. It's unfortunate for her. Hmm. Oh, I'm out of water. That's a problem. 16th of Sun's Dawn. 29.20. Sun Chow. Anacria. Modern day elsewhere. Yes, I know what's that. I know. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, Sun Chow rang a bell. It's like, isn't that elsewhere? Hmm. What? Wait. Oh, God. You know what you should do? What? What troubles you now? Asked Queen Hasima, noticing her husband's sour mood. At the end of most lovers' days, he was in an excellent mood, dancing in the ballroom with all the guests, but tonight he retired early. When she found him, he was curled up in bed, frowning. That blasted bard's tale about Pon Pon Polydor and Elosia put me in a rotten state, nya, yeah, he growled. Why did he have to be so depressing, nya? Yeah? But isn't that the truth of the tale, my dear? Weren't they doomed because of the cruel nature of the world, yeah? It doesn't matter what the truth is. He did a rotten job of telling a rotten tale, and I'm not going to let him do it anymore, yeah? King Drozel sprang from his bed. His eyes were roomy, rummy, with tears. Where did they say it was from again, yeah? I believe Gilliverdale in easternmost Valenwood, nya, yeah, said the queen, shaken. My husband, what are you going to do, nya? Yeah? Drozel was out of the room in a single spring, bounding up the stairs to his, of his, to, to his tower. If Queen Hasima knew what her husband was going to do, she did not try to stop him. He had been erratic of late, prone to fits of even occasional seizures. But she never suspected the depths of his madness and his loathing for the bard and his tale of wickedness and perversity found in mortal men. Alright. Seems like a weird 
thread that doesn't need to go anywhere. Just tales of Kajin. Are they going to be... Are they going to go to each of the provinces and talk about the leaders of each of the provinces? Yeah, maybe. Oh, we're, we're, we're literally about to go to Valenwood. Oh, are we continuing on for the same story? Yeah. No, I think... Wait, this is like how many days later? Three days later? Yep, three days later. Yeah, three days later. Night through the sun's dawn, 29 and 20. Gilverdale, Valenwood. Listen to me again, said the old carpenter. If shell three holds worth of brass, then shell two holds the gold key. If shell one holds the gold key, then shell three holds worth as brass. If shell two holds worth as brass, then shell one holds the gold key. Alright, I kinda wanna I kinda wanna figure this out before I read the rest of it. Hang on, give me a second. Cell three holds worth as brass. Alright, so well cell three is shit, two is good two is good. If one is good, then three is shit. If two is shit, then one is good. Hang on, wait, what? Okay, so hold on. If three has the shit, the worthless brass, then that's impossible because then it says that two has the gold key, but also one has the gold key. So, three cannot possibly have worthless brass. If two has worthless brass, then one has the gold key. Right? But if one has the gold key, then three is worthless brass. So, two cannot be worthless brass. So, the worthless brass is in cell one, which means the key is... Where exactly? <laughs> uh, it doesn't say. What's the question? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say. Well, I mean, I haven't read the next part yet. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Give me, give me, wait, wait. So the worthless brass is in cell one, right? Right? Because if it's in, it can't be in three and it can't be in two. Because if it's in two, then one has the gold key. But if one has the whole gold key, then three has the worthless brass. That's, you know, can't do that. So then, one has the gold key, but there's no, how do you, there's no way of knowing where the, the gold key is. Sorry, three has, god damn it, one has the worthless brass. Why can't the key be in the same thing with the worthless brass? I don't know, I'm just going to read on. All right. I understand, said the lady. You told me. And so, so one holds the gold key, right? No, said the carpenter. Let me start from the top. Mama, said the little boy, pulling on his mum's sleeve. Just a moment, dear. Mother's talking, she said, concentrating on the riddle. You said cell three holds the golden key. If cell two holds worth his brass, right? No, said the carpenter patiently. Cell three holds worth his brass. If cell two... Mama, cried the boy, his mother... Finally looked. Wait, what? <laughs> a bright red mist was pouring over the town in a wave, engulfing building after building in its wake. Striding before was a red skinned giant, the Daedra Molag Val. He was smiling. Where the fuck is this? This is in Valenwood. Wait, did, did the king summon Molag Val to take revenge on Valenwood? I guess so. Wait, so, wait, am I supposed to know the, am I supposed to be able to figure out the answer to this riddle? Just by the information? All I know is I know where the worthless brass is. Right? Well, it's not in one, because you just said no. It couldn't be in one. Because if the key was in one, then three has the worthless brass. But if three has the worthless brass, then the key is in two. What was the other thing she said? You said cell three holds the golden key. If cell two holds worthless brass. Did he even say that? No. <laughs> he said <laughs> the two has the worthless brass, then one has the key, you idiot. So I don't really understand. Oh, wait, maybe it's a pattern? Okay. Let me, let me explain that. So two to, th yeah, three to two. 
I'm going to skip the middle one for a second because it's backwards. 3 to 2, then 2 to 1, and then 3 to 1. And I'm going to be back in another part in case someone comes in. Yes, I am. So we're going to continue reading this in the next episode.